Hey everyone, it's Steve from Flip Screen Games, and in today's video I'm going to walk you through how to get the absolute most out of the Dolphin emulator on Steam Deck so you can improve the performance of your GameCube and Wii emulation, as well as installing texture packs, playing your favorite games online with friends, and as a bonus, the best way to play Metroid Prime Trilogy using the Prime Hacks emulator. So here we are starting out in desktop mode, and there's a few things we need to check before we continue. Now, the first thing that we need to make sure is that we're using the USA variant of the ROM. The reason for this is in the GameCube era, TVs were still CRTs, and we still had to contend with the 50 hertz in Europe versus 60 hertz in the USA and Japan and other NTSC regions. Now, in order to run games at 60 FPS, we need to use the US version of the ROM. So always pick the US version if you can. Obviously, if you're in Europe and you've ripped your own ROMs, there's not much you can do about it. Some games do support a 60 Hertz mode, but they are few and far between. And we're gonna check the wiki to see on a per game basis what we can do. The next thing we need to do is check that our version of EmuDeck is up to date. Now, if you've installed Dolphin manually, that's absolutely fine. There's nothing you need to do because the Flatpak version will be up to date through the Discover Store. But I would recommend that everyone installs through EmuDeck. And if you're not familiar what, with what EmuDeck is, it's essentially an installer that will run you through the process and configure basic options for dozens of systems. So once Emudex open, click the tools and stuff section down at the bottom. And there's a few things in here that we can utilize. We're gonna first of all wanna check on power tools. And if you haven't already, power tools is really gonna enable you to get the most out of your emulation. Essentially, it allows us to change the number of threads. So we can reduce the number of threads from down from eight and I recommend around three threads. Uh, the reason for this is with the, the fewer number of threads, the higher the clock each of those cores can run at. So if you've already installed Decky, if you followed through our tutorial for either the themes or for the, the custom boot screen plugins, you don't need to install Power Tools here and you can do that directly through Decky. If however, you don't have Power Tools, pop your password in here and you can then go through the process. Now, feel free to check out all of the tools. A couple of other useful options are uh, updating the emulators. You can do that directly from within EmuDeck. You can configure the gyro for the Wii U. You can compress some ROMs, uh, and you can also check the BIOS files that you're using to make sure that they match with the ones that the emulator expects. But for the purpose of this video, we're gonna click on to quick settings and from within here, we're just going to make sure that the dolphin aspect ratio right here in the middle is set to 4 by 3 16 by 9 will stretch the image using dolphin hacks. And I want to make sure that we do that on a per game basis. Some GameCube and Wii games had built in native 16 by 9 versions within the settings. And they conflict with Dolphin's hacks. So make sure that we've selected four by three and we're gonna go through and we'll configure them on a game by game basis. So now that we're done with EmuDeck, we're gonna open up the Dolphin emulator and you can get there by clicking on the application launcher in the bottom left, going to all applications and scrolling down to Dolphin emulator. Just double click on Dolphin emulator and that will open up a new window and it should load in the ROMs that you've already installed into the ROMs folder. If you're using EmuDeck, they are in your home directory and then emulation. And I'm gonna click on the config button to bring up the settings panel. And for the most part, everything can remain as default out of the box. EmuDeck selects some pretty sensible defaults and I think they're actually the defaults that Dolphin uses. Some, a couple of things we want to make sure are enabled is dual core. We want to also make sure that the fallback region is set to NTSCU if we're using the USA ROMs. We want to go over to uh, GameCube and make sure slot A is selected as a GCI folder. In Wii, we want to make sure that the PAL 60 mode is enabled in case you do want to use any uh, ROMs from Europe. 
You can do so with the Wii because most games do have a 60 hertz mode. But if you do encounter any problems, just use the USA version of the ROM. Unless you need one of the languages that the European mode offers, the USA version is usually the superior option. And that's it for the configuration. Everything else is done on a per game basis. And the way we know what settings each game needs is by heading over to the Dolphin Wiki. Dolphin has an official wiki where they list out requirements for or suggested settings for each of the games. And we're going to use Star Fox Adventures as an example. So within Star Fox Adventures wiki page, you can see that they say that Star Fox has a native 16x9 option. So we don't need to worry about 16x9. And that there are a couple of problems. So glow effects don't work correctly unless we set EFB copies to texture only in the settings. And there's a couple of aspect ratio uh, fixes that we can apply as well as an optional texture pack. Now I'll show you the texture pack in another section of the video that's not focused on performance. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna apply some of these uh, options. And in order to do that, we need to right click on the game and click on properties. That's going to bring up the properties panel for the game. And you can see we've got a bunch of tabs along the top. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to head to the editor within the game config. And you can see our user config at the bottom here. You can see I've already set EFB to texture enable as false. And we can change that within the presets. So in order to set that, I clicked on presets. I went down to video and I clicked on store EFB copies to texture only. And I made sure it was turned off as per the settings. The next thing we want to do is apply that aspect ratio fix. And these are done within the gecko code section. So I know that I've got revision one of the game from the USA. So I'm gonna copy the code. I'm gonna head back over to Dolphin and I'm gonna to go to gecko codes. I'm gonna click add new code and I'm gonna paste that code in the bottom section and click save. You can see this is now applied the uh, VI width 704 aspect ratio fix as applied. We can also click on download codes. And if there are some codes related to the game specifically that it already knows about, they will download. Uh, I think there are some games on uh, some codes on Simpsons Hit and Run. If I go over to Gecko Codes, I can click download codes. And you can see it's downloaded a bunch of codes. 16 by 9 widescreen I, I added by default. But you've also got uh, a whole bunch like drive through any anything max infinite coins and you can also apply cheat codes within here ar codes is action replay codes so if you have any action replay codes from when you played the game as a kid or you found online you can apply them within here as well um, sometimes there are patches that you might want to apply and these are specific patches to memory addresses it's unlikely you'll come across any unless you are modding the game so that's everything we need to do within desktop mode. We're gonna head back over to gaming mode and we'll try some of these games out and we'll see what performance changes we can get. When it comes to configuring games in gaming mode, we've got a few tools in our arsenal. We've got the built-in performance panel within SteamOS, which will enable us to configure things like a fixed clock speed for the GPU. But we've also got power tools that we installed either through EmuDeck or through the Decky plugin loader. And power tools will enable us to configure the number of cores in our CPU that are in use, or rather the number of threads in use. By default, the Steam Deck has four cores and eight threads with simultaneous uh, multi-threading. And we don't want to use all of those. Now you may be thinking, if I have all of these cores, won't my emulator run faster if I'm using all of them? And Dolphin specifically call this out in a question on their FAQ. And it says, couldn't Dolphin use more of my CPU cores to go faster? CPUs do not work that way. Every core on a CPU runs in parallel. In Dolphin, the only demanding tasks that can run well in parallel are the CPU, the GPU, and the DSP. That's why Dolphin only runs on three cores and won't use all of your four or six core CPU. And the reason why we want to reduce the number of threads is because by default, SteamOS will load balance and distribute all of the tasks evenly across all of the cores. The problem we have is that there's a maximum clock speed the CPU can run at. By reducing the number of cores or the number of threads in use, each one of those threads can run at a higher clock speed, which often improves performance within emulators. 
So before we get started, we just want to make sure that we've got power tools installed. And you can do that by opening up the quick access menu with the dot 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 button on your Steam Deck. And just make sure that you've got the plug icon at the bottom and that power tools is installed. If it's not, see earlier in the video where we go through installing it in MU Deck or check out our tutorial all about decky and theming your Steam Deck. And I'll put a link down in the description or you can click on the iCard. Here we are in Star Fox Adventures and you can see within game scope that we're miles away from 60 FPS, hitting around 38 to 40 FPS. Now, unfortunately that causes a lot of issues when it comes to emulation. We have sound issues, we have uh, performance issues. The game just doesn't feel right. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to open up Power Tools and we're going to reduce the number of threads. We're going to go down from eight all the way down to three threads. Now, as Dolphin said in their FAQ, they only use three cores. And I find between three or four threads seems to make the most difference. Now, you can see we've pretty much come all the way up to 60 FPS just by solving that. And sometimes you may find that it's still not quite hitting it. And you might want to go to the performance tab as well. And from within here, you can choose a manual GPU clock. When it's plugged in, I find that 1600 megahertz is no problem whatsoever. That's the maximum that you can achieve from the GPU within SteamOS. However, when you're in battery, you might want to reduce that GPU clock down to something sensible, maybe 1000 megahertz. But you can see we're now getting a solid 60 FPS by both reducing the number of threads within power tools and also setting a fixed clock speed within the performance tab in Steam OS. I want to show you one other game that a lot of people have problems with and that's Super Mario Galaxy for the Wii. As you can see we're again not hitting 60 FPS, we're ranging between 50 and 55 FPS. I'm, I've got power tools open on the right hand side here and I want you to take a look at the megahertz for each of the CPU cores in GameScope. At the moment they're hitting around 2000 megahertz for cores 0, 1 and 2. If I reduce the number of threads down to three threads again, you'll see that the number of cores have reduced and the megahertz for each of the cores is hitting around 3500 megahertz. And that's the reason this solves the problem. Those, each of those threads can run at a higher clock speed and therefore performance is so much better than it would be with all of the threads active on SteamOS. There's one last thing I want to go through in gaming mode and that is multiple controller support. By default, Dolphin's only configured for a single controller and that's either the Steam Deck or whatever external controller you've connected. Now you can see here I've got two Xbox wireless controllers connected and they're working as expected through Bluetooth. And I can configure these so we can play a two or three player game or up to four players, however many players we want within Dolphin. Now in order to do this, you need to make sure Dolphin is added as a shortcut to your library. And by default, this is done by EmuDeck. So if you install through EmuDeck and then use the Steam ROM manager, Dolphin will be in your library. But if not, add it as a non-Steam game. And if you need any help, then drop a comment down below and I'll walk you through the process. So we're going to open up Dolphin here and that's going to boot into the interface that we've become familiar with over in desktop mode. And to configure the controllers, we just need to click on controllers in the top bar. You can see at the top I've got GameCube controllers and we've got a standard controller in port one. In port two, I'm gonna select a second standard controller and I'm gonna click on configure. This is gonna bring up our controller configuration screen and you can see I can move the sticks on my Steam Deck and that controls the control stick and the C stick on the screen. Now, if I wanna add a second controller, if we've already paired them to the Steam Deck, you'll see they'll pop up down here as Xbox 360 pads. We want to select the SDL slash zero and then either Xbox 360 pad one or two for whatever the controllers you have paired are. Now it doesn't matter which controller you use, whether it's a, an Xbox controller or a PlayStation controller or a Nintendo controller, they'll always show up as Xbox 360 pads. Just experiment and select through the Xbox 360 pads that are listed and find the controllers that you've paired and put them in the ports that you want. Okay, so now we're gonna head over to desktop mode and I'll walk you through installing texture packs, netplay, and we'll quickly touch on prime hacks for those that want to play the Metroid Prime trilogy in the best way possible. 
Installing custom textures for GameCube and Wii games is pretty easy. The first thing we're going to want to do is open up Dolphin and click on the graphics button. This is going to bring up the configuration window and we're going to then want to click on the advanced tab. Under utility, check load custom textures and prefetch custom textures. And then just close out the window and close Dolphin. The next thing we're going to need is a texture pack itself. And you can find these within the Dolphin wiki. Each game that has a texture pack will be listed here. And you can see for Star Fox Adventures, we can just click on the Star Fox Adventures HD pack. That'll take us through to the Dolphin forum where this was posted. Now the pack that I recommend is the DDS version. They load a little bit quicker and you'll notice no real visual difference between the two. Once you've downloaded the pack, open up the Dolphin file browser and head to your home directory. We're going to click on the menu button in the top right and click show hidden files. From here, we're going to want to click .var, app, and then org dolphin mu dot dolphin dash mu. We're going to click on data, dolphin mu, and then we're going to click on the load file. From within here, there's a textures directory, and you can see I've got a folder called GSA. Each of the texture packs you download will have a folder with a three letter code on. That three letter code corresponds to the game itself. For Star Fox Adventures, that code is GSA. If we click into the folder, you'll see it's just a bunch of folders that the game will reference in order to load the te custom textures. Inside is just a whole bunch of images and they replace the built in images and textures within the game. I quickly want to touch on Dolphin Netplay. Dolphin Netplay is a feature that will allow you to play your favorite multiplayer GameCube games that originally only had split screen multiplayer with anyone in the world. Now, in order to set up a Netplay session, we need to right click on the game that we're interested in playing and click host with Netplay. This is going to open up the Netplay window and within here we can start a game. You can see on the right hand side, we can assign controller ports. So if we're playing with multiple local players, we can assign them here. And then we can just click start in order to start the game. It'll warn you if you're using an NK disc and you can say, yes, I'm aware of the risks. Basically, both players need to have the same game. And now you can see that I'm loading up into a net play version of the game. Now, there are a couple of settings within here that you may want to configure if you have some performance issues. When I played through Mario Party 5 with a friend, we ended up having a little bit of lag. But in order to solve that, what we did is we went to Network and we changed it to Host Input Authority. Now, what happens here is that the host will have no latency whatsoever, but there will be a little bit of latency for other players. This is fine for games like Mario Party 5, and you can see it's suitable for casual games with three plus players or possibly on unstable connections. Fair input delay, will enable you to essentially run in lockstep. That's how the game will run on, say, Nintendo Switch Online. And if you have a bad connection or both players are in different areas of the world, you may have some issues with that. Golf mode is a little bit different to the other two. This is the same as host input authority, except the host who has zero latency can be switched at any time. So this is great for turn-based games so that the host can switch from, say, me playing the game to someone else. And it's called Golf Mode because it's ideal for games like golf. If I want to join someone's Netplay session, I need to click on Tools, Browse Netplay Sessions, and you'll see that they'll all load in. I can set my session to be private or public, and then anyone can join me, or I can set a password so only my friends can join me. Now, the last thing I want to call out before we wrap up is Prime Hacks. Prime Hacks is a custom version of Dolphin specifically designed for the Metroid Prime trilogy. There's a custom folder that's set up by Emudeck within the ROMs folder called Prime Hacks. And from within here, you're going to want to drop the Metroid Prime trilogy ROM. Once you've added the ROM to Prime Hacks, really all you need to do is load Steam ROM Manager and add it to Steam. 
But if you prefer to open it up through desktop mode, go to all applications and you'll find a second version of Dolphin emulator underneath Dolphin within the app launcher. From here, you can see there's a version with the Prime icon. And if you click on that, it will open up and you can see this is Prime Hack. Prime Hacks does a bunch of things. You can load in custom textures really easily. It will also patch the game to add the correct icons and full first person control support without the need for using any motion controls. It really is the best way to play Metroid Prime Trilogy. And if you're looking to play that game on your Steam Deck, definitely check out Prime Hack versus the original Dolphin emulator. Now I want to hear from you. Let me know down in the comments what you're playing on your Steam Deck and if there's anything else you want me to go through in these videos. I'm having such a great time doing them. Thank you all so much for watching and a special thank you to all of our Patreons for making this possible. In particular, our Patreon producers for this month, which are Christian Oliveria, Christopher Valenz, Gabriel Hasselmeyer, aka Asobi, Mary Berry, Wakahula, and Zaid Eda. We really couldn't do it without you. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you found this video useful. I've been Steve signing off and shall see you on the next one. Bye for now.